like to call this meeting January 10, 2023, 6.03. Um, the first thing I want to do is have a moment of silence uh, for past principal at uh, Sunderland, uh, principal here at uh, Frontier Regional, and also Superintendent Marty Barrett. <clears throat> Bobby, if you don't mind if I could say a few words further, uh, just because she was clumped here, but she was very close. She hired me, as you guys all know, and then was my mentor for many years, and then mentor to many of the administrators and uh, teachers in this building, and just an amazing person who always made it about the kids. And to the point where, as a fellow administrator, sometimes it was even frustrating. Um, she really was about, you know, what is it? What are we doing about the kids? And she set a tone that still carries in this building that makes it the kids' building. When we talk about making changes and that kind of thing, we used to talk about, you know, we talk about the kids and vandalizing a bathroom. This is your bathroom. Why are you doing this? You know what I mean? We talked about changing rules. You know, she made sure she had kids involved. And she, it was always about that right up from, where she came in and took over National Honor Society because she wanted to have more pop and circumstance and more student ownership of that process and that kind of thing. Just, I just wanted to say a little bit further only because I know many people in this, in this room worked with her to some level, some capacity, and, and we just left her um, service a little about an hour ago. Um, just, you know, just an amazing person. So I just wanted to take it one step further. <clears throat> and, um, I appreciate the moment. Thank you. Uh like the review of the minutes from November 8th. Anybody have any questions? I know I wasn't there and I see Olivia are both not there. Do I have a motion? Move for approval, Mr. Chair. I have a second. I see. All in favor? Uh, the superintendent's award was on the original one that got sent out, but not on the one in front okay. of me. I don't know if it's on in front of you. Well, we do have a guest here to receive the superintendent's award. Let's do that next time. All right. So <laughs> hand it over to me. Okay. Um, I'd like to introduce Sydney Scalen. Sydney, just stand up and just everybody can see you clearly. This year's superintendent um, award winner. Um, with her is her mother, Holly, and her father, Tom Scanlon. Some of you may have seen before. Um, I'm gonna read my little speech. We recognized um, Sydney at the, uh, the awards dinner that happened in December, where all Franklin County <coughs> superintendents, uh, awards winners come together. You don't stand for the whole thing. <laughs> Unless, do we make her stand for the whole thing? No. Relax. Um, and it was, it, was a, it was a wonderful evening, and I just wanna share what, we, what I said to, about her that evening, and I'm just so proud to, again, present Sydney. Sydney is strong academically, Strong academically, self-motivated team player, and a school leader is, is the shorthand description of Sydney Scanlon. Sydney is the top of her class and is in National Honor Society. She's been in a maximum honor role all through school and has a 4.62 GPA. And as I said that evening, a 4.62 has got to be a typo. It was, it was the highest in the room. It just goes to show the amount of AP courses and um, just the, the difficult schedule that she's had in her way through Frontier. This year, Sydney is taking AP Chemistry and AP Statistics. In her junior year, she took AP Calculus, AP Biology, and AP English Language and Composition. In her sophomore year, she took AP Human Geography. Um, in 2022, she received the AP Scholar Award because of her outstanding exam scores. In 2020, Sydney was the National Latin Exam Silver, Silver Medal Certificate winner. Sydney's AP Statistics te teacher, Steve Blinder, <clears throat> told me this quick story. Mr. Blinder said, in AP stats, I usually write a new test or modify the old one, each unit, so that I may emphasize the different parts of the unit from, from one year to the other. So I want the test to be accurate and reflect the emphasis I put into each topic. Secretly, for every chapter test, I use Sydney's test. She's an incredible hardworking student who rarely has to be taught something twice. She is my answer key. And he said, let's keep that our secret. So 
Only on television. <laughs> best, best, best season. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Sydney is the captain of this year's Frontier Volleyball team, who just a few months ago won another state championship. This is Sydney's second state title, as she was a contributing member of the state championship team her freshman year in 2019. She has been a multiple year winner of the Massachusetts All State Award, in addition to numerous team awards. Um, Sydney is also a member of the school's tennis team, where she plays doubles. So if you're looking to partner up there. Also in sports, also, not also in sports, outside of sports, Sydney is active in the, in the Model United Nations team, is a member of the Math Modeling Team, the Feminist Club, the Latin Club, the Health Occupation Students of America Club. And this past spring, she also served as the inaugural Boys High School Volleyball Team Manager, where she helped recruit players, organize, and direct practice and manage games. Outside of school, Cindy volunteers with Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Franklin County, works as an office assistant in her family's accounting firm, and provides pet care services. And I'm sure she'll leave a card if anybody needs it. Prior jobs have also included working at Yankee Candle, um, store as a retail associate, and being a youth soccer camp counselor for the University of Massachusetts Amherst. To get a glimpse of her as a person, I got this note from her AP English teacher, Ms. Varney. Sydney is both quietly conscientious student and supportive classmate and friend. She finds a, the tenuous balance between stepping up and giving space. Not too long ago, Sydney asked me to look over a supplemental short essay. Sydney wrote about a close friend of hers, someone who has been a strong support for many, many years. She captured some beautiful characteristics of this person's in friendship as a whole. It wasn't trite or juvenile or superficial the way reflections can sometimes get when we write about our feelings or about universal themes like friendship. Not only did I gain a whole new awareness and respect for her friend, I saw her. I saw a gracious and rooted side to Sydney. She is someone who thoroughly understands friendship beyond your camaraderie and good or good company. I appreciate her ability to lift someone else into the light, because what that light did was to hold them both. Very nice. An impact. An impactful experience. Um, for her future took place this past summer when Sydney was selected for an internship at Bay State Franklin Medical Center. Here she was able to shout out doctors and nurses in two departments in an emergency room and lab. Additionally, she was able to visit a number of other departments including rehabilitation, oncology, radiology, pharmacy, and Pioneers Women Health. This opportunity reinforced Sydney's desire to study science and possibly go into the medical field. I don't think Frontier is ready to see her leave, but Sydney plans next year um, is that she has committed to Union College to continue her love of volleyball and possibly a pre-med major. I am so very proud, Frontier Superintendent Award winner, Cindy Scanlon, to be presented here tonight to you. <laughs> Got a speech? <laughs> Any questions we have for her at the door? I want to put her on the spot. Good job. Okay. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You're ready? You don't have to stay around anymore. Thank you. Have a good night. Congratulations. <clears throat> you're next. Me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I sent out the expense reports to you. I don't have a formal report. There's been no major change to any of the expense lines. There's no new concerns. Nothing has popped up since we last met. Um, but there were 45 warrants totaling uh, a large amount, $4 million, $49,531.35. Two months. It was two, two months, months of warrants, yeah. yeah. Um, December. Yeah. Actually, there might have been some from late November, too, in there. But yes, in January. <clears throat> Um, and if you have questions about line items after looking at those reports, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Any questions? Thanks, Shelly. Sure. Uh, any public comment tonight? Public. Anybody on public on there? No? Okay. No public comment. Uh, student council report? Uh, hi, I'm Amory, and I'm here from the Student Council. Hi, so, thank you. I just have a list of updates. 
So the student council is putting on a winter semi-formal dance on the 21st in the gym. Uh, it's intended to celebrate the end of the semester and is geared towards students. So that's hopefully going to go well. Uh, the STEPS program is running a food and hygiene drive for the Amherst Survival Center through the month of January. So collect bins can be found at the entrances. Uh, the Frontier Writing Center led a final skills workshop and continues to offer one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions for all high school students. And also, 8th and 10th grade health classes are going through their One Love Healthy Relationships units, where they focus on learning how to spot the signs of health, unhealthy and healthy relationships, communicate boundaries, and access resources for support. So, that's just what's currently going on with the student body. Anybody have questions? Hey, keep up the good work. Thank you. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. You're next, George. Hi. So, uh, so uh, I sent out uh, the report to everybody. I did send one amendment. Um, I did have did um, have to make a change to the school choice uh, sheet, which there we had the wrong numbers initially. But so, just a few things. So, once again, so uh, Yankee Candle has donated um, four thousand dollars to Frontier. So, I did did want to give a big thank you. I know I saw that it's on the agenda to be that's voted right. on. So, that's sure. all right. I think it's a good thing, but it's. It's going to be very helpful uh, as always, so we greatly appreciate that. Uh, this year, also um, for the first time in a few years now, we're, we're finally going back to DC. That is, so we've been uh, meeting uh, to continue planning that every other week. Uh, we are financially, we're doing really well financially, with um, in terms of the fundraising, in terms of the gifts, uh, in terms of uh, the number of students that have signed up to go. I think there, uh, out of the entire eighth grade, I want to say there are less. There are fewer than ten students who are not signed up to go, um, which is we're really excited about. Um, and then the other, the other part of it that I should also say is that the students that are not going um, to DC, we've actually we're planning uh, field trips for them while they're here. We're um, connecting with Morse Hill um, and uh, the Yiddish Book Center, so they're going to be um, doing that um, in lieu of going to DC. Um, <coughs> So that's going on. Uh, also, uh, and Olivia can chime in about if she wants to talk about this too. She can. But we're moving forward with Chicago with our, our, new, our new director, uh, Tom Klanzik. Um, we're really excited about that. Production dates are happening um, the weekend of March 17th. Uh, and then I submitted everybody uh, the school choice uh, recommendations. So once again, we've opened up for school choice. We're going to be closing um, the applications for school choice as of February 1st. Um, uh, but basically, um, we were, you know, I know that we'll be voting on whether or not we should be moving forward with school choice. Um, you know, our school choice numbers, they are healthy. They continue to be healthy. Uh, we'll probably, even after we close, we can still um, accept students based on an as needed basis. <coughs> so, um, we would still have the ability to accept students if they applied after the February 1st deadline, if we had space. And at this point in time, we would have space. Um, so, so just so you know, so that's what's going on as well. So I know that there's a vote that happen uh, on the agenda also. So, but things are going well. Things are really good. This semester is going to be ending in about a week and a half also. What are we going to do with the four thousand dollars? Any ideas yet? So right now, the initial. So initially, what we're looking at is using to help support some of the students for uh, financial aid to go on the Washington D.C. trip. And also to uh, allow the students to go to more so. Okay. Anybody have any questions for George? That, that was actually one of my questions was yeah. that those less than 10 that are right. uh, yeah. not going, you don't get the sense that this is a financial restriction that's. No. Okay. That's, no. Uh, um, actually, no. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good number to call on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really good. Okay, uh, unfinished business, uh, capital projects, tennis courts, boiler, <coughs> roof. I have, those of you who are digital, don't take one. Um, I'm That's passing out, pages. oh, there's two pages. Two pages. The Frontier Capital Improvement Subcommittee has met a few times this fall. Um, 
and we really have a lot to talk about tonight. So the agenda looks short, but this is a big topic because it's talking about um, a lot of projects or three projects that are a lot of money. Um, and so what I'm going to do is going to take you through each one and we probably should go at the end because cumulatively the projects are related to each other in the fact of how we're funding it in different ways. Okay. So Oh, you know, I gotta get this. There's two, two pages. pages. <laughs> They're like in sequence. There, you just grab it. Like, grab the next two. This is good. This is good. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's well, it's modified because the same information. I just sent it out, you know, I was, I was really, I, it says I need access. Well, ask for it then. Ask for it. So if you request access, I'll give it to you. Yeah, I see it, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, because you're on your Gmail account. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I'm yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes you're a pain. All right, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Let's jump into this. So the, the three projects that we're looking at are the tennis court, the boiler, and the roof replacement. Um, and I'm going to start with the tennis court project. Um, right now, the um, tennis court project is estimated to come in around just under $300,000. Um, and it is to resurface the tennis courts and to uh, I mean, total resurface, taking the, the asphalt right out and replacing the fencing around it. Um, so kind of brand new tennis courts, but in the same footprint. So there's nothing, it's a new set of tires, so to speak. Um, <clears throat> what we, um, through discussions with, and if any of the committee wants to, to present, you're welcome to, but I'll, I know you guys usually defer to me. Um, we, we determined that, you know, a lot of the tennis court use, especially recently with the pickleball, um, craze that is going on. Um, you know, we, we thought about instead of going to the towns and putting it on their warrants, that we should go in and in, in talking. Remember that the, the uh, capital subcommittee is made up of four select board members and four school committee members. So we're talking with the town people, um, governments at the same time, in going after CPA money to help offset this cost instead of a warrant article that goes after their free cash. Um, perhaps they could, you know, towards rich. Um, recreation and so what we're going to do is what we'd like to do on your approval is request a hundred thousand dollars from the four towns based on their um what they their cost share to frontier is so shelly will chime in at what those numbers are in a second i probably should throw them on there um and then the rest balance we paid from by frontier using end um and, say, and or other free cash funds, meaning E&D or school choice, depending on how some of this other stuff works out. And we'll explain that the other two projects. Um, the timeline would be to, um, if you agree to do this, um, is to open up the bids this winter, almost immediately, or, you know, starting next month or so to do the bids so that we can get this work done this summer slash fall, depending on when the contractors and the bids fall. As, Placement, as we learned with the track, also affects bid costs. So if they say, hey, we can do it in September for $50,000 less, we're going to do it in September. You know, that kind of thing, you know, as long as we can do it without disruptions to school. Um, <clears throat> we would be making the decision prior to the approval of town meetings of the CPA money. And um, it, there is a risk on doing that, but the problem is that the tennis courts have reached a point where they're going to be, and I think we might be able to get through one more year. I'm not sure they're going to allow us to play on them this year. I mean, the cracks have now have gone to, um, you know, they went from the width of a dime to now they're the width of a half dollar. Um, so I talked with the attorney. He said, you're allowed to do that because you have other funds that um, you're suggesting they pay for it in that such a way. And you have other funds that can back that up because we could transfer school choice if we had to cover the last hundred thousand um, dollars. But we do feel that the courts themselves, and in discussion with even you know, like I said, the town select board members that are part of this group, 
there are enough townspeople using this percentage wise, one third <clears throat> paying for by the towns and two thirds paid for by the regional school um, feels um, appropriate. Shelly did plug in what the cost of each town um, through their CPA funds are. I think Deerfield's the only one that hasn't requested information from us for CPA funds. Conway, Waitley, and Sunderland asked us for details for their applications. <clears throat> and Deerfield is the post town greater, greatest user, one would think proportionally. Um, we also, for those watching at home, we also are going to paint pick along the pickleball lines on the court as well um, so that they can be dual use. So that right now, I mean, they're still playing out there now, but if you were out, I think I've said this at the last meeting, if you came to any of the fall sports games, there's three or four, five, six courts going on the weekends. They're, they're doing tournaments and such. So um, it's really nice to see the public using using the courts. Um, also, we do use the courts for gym classes. It's not just for tennis team. We use it for gym classes. And we also use it for special education classes. Go out there as well. Um, it creates a safe, uh, safe area zone that they can um, work with. We just started out. a pickleball club. And we just started yeah. a pickleball yeah. club. <laughs> As we probably should, because we have to compete with those folks that are out there. Um, I guess I just have a stupid question about pickleball and tennis courts. Is is there any different type of wear and tear doing pickleball versus tennis? No. Just, Sneakers on asphalt. Yep. Yeah, just, so. Um, the bride on the court, really. <laughs> Has there been a uh, formal outreach to the uh, large? So I met with the. Pickleball. I did meet with the pickleball <laughs> president. <laughs> came in with came with his entourage. Um, very powerful individual in town. Uh, I did meet, and um, they are um, upon your approval. They are going to be sending letters um, of support because they'd like to see. Um, pickleball spaces and that they, they they have members from all towns and they're going to do I say they don't have to do a letter campaign and drive um, our towns crazy but one letter with all the people that are participating pickleball included and such um, so once this gets approved I would still send them a note and they would send it out that they approve um, so they get an idea because those who haven't seen it they get a list that say these are the following people participating regularly in our program from our four towns um, Letters, letters, yes. Large <clears throat> cash donations, no. I, oh, I also reached out. I did. I, I'm shameless in that area. I said, <laughs> if you are thinking about lights or anything like that, now's the time to do it. And if you have any big donors, and they said they would ask, but I haven't heard anything back on that. Um, I mean, obviously, you don't need football stadium lights, but you know, every tennis court in Florida has lights on, and I imagine you know the cost of that you know isn't too high. Although, like, <clears throat> when this is going out to bid, might it not be worth? If this is on the same put footprint and there is such an appeal to try to expand this thinking ahead if we improve if we increase the footprint and they had a couple more pickleball courts that are smaller would it might be worth kind of getting a little bit of information and tossing that towards the pickleball folks and saying listen we could make this bigger for you guys if <laughs> <laughs> you guys can come up with this amount of fun yeah <laughs> Right now, the footprint, we, we run into problems that I think we changed the footprint. Um, just, but the idea of, you know, we could do with the light contingency is, um, I can I can talk with Berkshire Design, you know, um, we'd also probably have to go to planning board for that because it's changing the footprint and neighbors and that kind of stuff. But it's not the stadium lights, you know, there's, you know, yeah. tennis lights are much lower and not as uh, whatever, maybe doing one side lit. I mean, because they are playing into the night, you know. I know, and, I know they're not there. there. They're passionate folks. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. Um, all right, so that's the first. <clears throat> we would be voting on one that recommending that the town pay, um, ask the town to pay um, $100,000 from CPA based on the numbers there and um, approve the funding, the remainder of the cost, which would be approximately um, the 190000 it could be more, so you know that, that could fluctuate. Um, but we did get those numbers this fall, so it's not like we're running off last year. You know, the number actually was higher last spring; it was two twenty or three, three twenty, three forty ish. So it's come down slightly, but it could go right back up. Um, all right. So that's the first thing. The next one is the boiler. So we did have a boiler study. Um, 
that came back and um, the subcommittee reviewed it. The, the, the study recommended that we do replace the two boilers and replace it with three higher efficiency boilers. Um, they said there are no green projects that are economically feasible to the range of, you know, we're talking about geo, because I asked them to look at geothermal and those kind of things, um, you know, full solar array, that kind of, you know, it just, we don't have the amount of um, BTUs these boilers have to put out to, in, to use the current system that we have that heats the school, um, really you have to replace them with boilers. There is a huge difference with the boilers we would be placing them with though. We would be going to, right now our boilers, I wish Bill was here, but I'm gonna try my best. Um, I believe we have a three-stage boiler, um, high, medium, low, okay? Um, to kind of, kind of break that down simply, and if anybody knows more about this stuff or was in the meeting and remembers it better than I, please jump in. Um, these are gonna be 10-stage boilers, so that on that um, crisp spring morning where you need to have heat in the building, but it's gonna be 75 degrees by noon, you can put the boiler in and on at 2%, you know, and get some heat moving without. So you're going to be doing energy conservation by going to a higher efficiency boiler within this. Because I, I know some people, like, what about carbon footprint and that, those kind of things? Um, you know, we can start looking at doing other things to offset, other, you know, talking about putting solar on the roof or that kind of thing, not to heat the building with that electricity, but to offset other, you know, other carbon footprints by the school. But this really wasn't the place to do it in a way that was going to be cost cost effective. Again, also going to three boilers, um, allowing you to just turn one on, um, and the way the three work together, the three combined give you enough BTUs when we get those minus 10 degrees days, 20 degree days, that kind of stuff. Um, that is that is the, the, the follow-up from the report. The, um, the cost of this is about $325,000. Um, and that does not include the installation. That's just the cost of the three boilers. And then we're gonna to have to come up with another $175,000 to install them. So it's a half a million dollar project. Um, the boiler number is a little bit closer than the estimated installation number, meaning the boiler number is what it was, you know, had we ordered them um, when we put this proposal together at the end of summer. Um, so, you know, that number is, it will be, re will be relatively close. Um, we can submit to DESE to use ESSER 3 money um, to be applied to this because it does fall, we believe it falls under HVAC. Um, and we can see, we have to file, you know, if we move forward with this, we will file this because it will affect the money that we have for the roof, which I'll, it's another conversation we're going to have in a few minutes. Um, the plans for this um, is to plan the winter, bid this winter slash spring, install some are dependent on if we can get the actual boiler pieces. Um, some some <clears throat> boiler pieces and stuff have been six months to a, a year out. Um, our current boilers, you know, are limping along. Um, the One of the questions that they did ask in the study is like, do you patch and go for the next five years? And the recommendation was based on fuel efficiency, the fact that you don't know what you're gonna be able to patch and be able to find parts given the market and the time to get those parts. Um, well, the recommendation was not. He said, you certainly can go the route of patch and pray for the next five years because you know the current boilers are functioning, even though we've taken sections out. Um, you know, I want you to think of uh, a boiler like a rib cage and the, and the water is going through each of the ribs. You can lose, as we've had failing ribs, we pull those ribs out. And so there's just actual holes in the, it's a, and the water filter should have less ribs, obviously decreasing the efficiencies and that kind of stuff. But that's what we have been doing. And we, one could limp along, but again, the committee, after reviewing the report and discussing and such, is making the recommendation that we move forward um, and replace it now. The cost of those boilers are only going to go up, you know, and the cost of everything is only going to go up. And so, um, and currently, right now, um, we will have the money um, between school choice funds um, to do that. The, the past few years we've had, um, because of the use of ESSER and some other savings with, with different things, we have um, a greater amount of school choice funds than we've had in the past. And so using it for this kind of one-time purchase, not going to the towns for capital, um, seems like the prudent idea. 
questions on Euler. And then, you, or you can save them to the end and we can, we can, we can feel them there too. Just to add a little, the, what struck me about that boiler engineering report was just the last paragraph <clears> where you said, your boilers are past the end of their life expectancy. They are going to fail catastrophically in the next few years. Your choice is when you you can deal with it. You have to deal with it. Your choice is when you want to deal with it. Um, so. Right. I think the idea here is that if we have to do it when they're broken, it's going to cost more. If it, if we have to deal with it when it's broken during cold season, it's going to cost more because we have to put everything on expediting and that kind of stuff, and we won't have the ability to go out bid it um, in details there. The last part is the roof replacement. All right, and so I'm going to share. Um, okay. This is the map, uh, aerial view of our school, <laughs> colored in by one of our third graders. You know, colored in by Bill Hilton. Um, <laughs> And what, what, we, what we're showing you here is that, so we discussed the roof. In the roof, um, to do the whole roof in the current market would probably cost between three to five million dollars, okay? The whole roof does not need to be done immediately. However, we are having failing sections of the roof. So um, this, the subcommittee talked about, um, you can go to um, the uh, building authority, the school building authority, um, in roof and windows is one of the subcategories of that and you can do a project through them um there's a lot of discussion we have many long discussions on that because of <coughs> the, the escalator and cost when you go through them um, because you're doing everything through a boston firm and we saw that through um deerfield there were a lot of complaints within the community or different boards and stuff that the cost they felt it cost more than we, we went through to get it um, and then we did that differently when we did it, I believe in Conway, we did not go through the building authority and it was a much smoother project than I believe that came in at a lower cost. So that was a lot of the history of our communities when we talk about roofs. So what we did is we had the roof study done um, and the roof for the most part, um, as he described it, is the assets <clears throat> are in good shape, meaning that you have your roof, your flat roofs, and those are the colored areas um, above us is the slanted steel roof, um, is that you have insulation. That insulation hasn't been um, penetrated by water yet, meaning that you'd have to replace all the insulation in combination with that. And they were able to do that. They did the scan. That's what we paid that $20,000 for. They did the scan of the roof to see where the integrity of it was. And they also believe that um, we could do this in sections. Okay. Um, the committee discussed, you know, Right now, I don't think any town has the appetite for a three to $5 million additional loan on top of the 1.8 that we haven't really started paying principal on yet. Um, and the original idea of the $400,000 that we had toward that was to repair um, portions of the roof, not do the entire roof. The problem is when, you have to remember when that report came out, that was 2015. So now we're almost eight years later, eight, no, yeah, eight years later, and you know the roof is getting older each year so i wanted to just to overshare the different colors here Let's see if i can um this can everybody see the pointer here the green area on the on the left there that is the middle school end so on the other side of that where that line would be the tennis courts this the pink area is this long section here. We're inside the square, which is the library. Um, the other green area is the auditorium. The left hand side of that is the art rooms, um, uh, bathrooms, art rooms, and weight room. And then you have a uh, girls' locker room. And then the big square is the gym. The other pink side is the boys' locker room. And then blue area is the three the three story high school. And then the other side is there's these little landings that are above the music rooms. This, this lower, this lower area here are uh, the band room and the strings room. Okay. <clears throat> um, what they so they basically broke it off by priority of need. Right now, 
the pink area above the locker room is in the grays, is in, is in, we are leaking every year. We've been trying to patch those leaks annually. There are a few pieces of equipment on this roof, um, but the second area that we're having leaks is this stretch right here. And some nights of you may have been, there was one parent night a few years ago where we had a bucket in the hallway and everybody thought it was a, I was doing some kind of scheme like shared areas, you just put some water in that bucket. But we do have some leaks on this. A lot of it is coming from the scene, came from the scene between this and the, uh, the library. But the roof is made up of a material, uh, a PVC material that is, that does degrade over time. The sun beats on it and it starts to flake and starts to, to slowly um, work away. So, you know, um, the idea is to break into phase and the first being phase one, the second being phase two, which is the um, band room and girls locker room and gym. Phase three, as you can see, is the auditorium and middle school. And phase four is the high school um, and the flat area above the <coughs> arch rooms. So when we talk about phases and there's a basically a square footage for each one of them. So I'll leave this here. So in the handout that you have or on your computer, um, we've broken down the phases and there's two types of, of course, there's two qualities of the roof layman. You have a <coughs> um, 060, which is basically a 20 year, and 090, which is a 30 year, okay? And the interesting question, conversation that came up is we, what do you do, 20 year or 30 year? Does the cost make a difference? And at what point are we replacing this building? crazy conversation to have, right? Because and people at home are going, what? A new school? But eventually we got to start thinking about that. It's like, what is the, what is happening underneath and how long until we do a full refurbish of this entire building? Um, and so what we discussed was that perhaps that's 30 years away. Um, but let me back up. I think I went ahead myself here. So we want to break this up into phases. And the phase timeline is phase one is to be done this year, uh, into next year rather. Um, phase two is three to five years out. Phase three is five to seven years out. And phase four is however else those numbers are, you know, that kind of thing. And we're basically, we've reached the end of our life of the roof on paper, but we haven't had leaks yet in those other areas. So it's like, we can ride this roof a little bit longer. Um, and the idea was to create a capital stabilization account to start putting money toward in, um, <clears throat> uh, toward the roof, and then start doing some financial planning with that as kind of getting on the town's radar. Um, and those, those estimate number of years out, you know, you know, we can limp along, roofs can limp along even longer, or we can start having major, um, you know, seam problems and repair problems that are too costly to, um, you know, they're, they're going to, want us to speed up to repair um so the idea is to do phase one um use the four hundred thousand dollars that are available from uh, the band loan and if we get approval from desi to use the esser funds for the boiler that will relieve some funds to be able to do the full part of phase one if if the cost comes up too high through the butt bidding we would just do the area over the locker room and not do the area over here and just kind of do a phase 1.5 later on as kind of a, the, the next step before we go to phase two. Um, but we don't want to spread ourselves too thin on, on some of these spendings. Um, so as I say, we're going to ask Jesse for ESSER funds for the boiler. If it frees monies, then we can complete the other $175,000 $175, that is needed on top of the $400,000. Threw a lot at you there. Questions at where we're at right now? At what point do we decide which of the two kinds of roofing material? <laughs> so we recommended that the first one be done with 90 because by the time we get to the so second part of the roof, it's going to be 10 years down the road. Exactly. Anyway, and at that point, the rest of the building might be considered a 20 years before we start doing a full rehab of the building. So, I mean, within 30 years, you're going to do a full rehab of the building. So it is one would think. If, you know, if I was in your position 30 years from now, you can see yourself sitting at the table 30 years from now. 
which isn't crazy because Bill. Bill is sitting Free here. Bill. <laughs> I've done two already. Um, <laughs> but but those are kind of things that you know we, we did discuss as that, um, and that's why we broke it into phases because it could be. And I don't think there certainly isn't an appetite to replace a roof that's not leaking yet. Um, I know that's not not everybody would agree with that that knowledge, but that that approach rather. But that's I don't think, I think anybody that, would fight you for logic of getting ten more years out of it for another eighty thousand dollars. Right. Yeah, so it brings sense not to. Especially phase one, because the next phase may not happen until five years, seven years out, or maybe in, in the whole thing may not be completed ten years out. And then along the way, we can make the determination. By the time you know, maybe something crazy will happen. The price will come down. Trying to get to the end, you'll be having a phase five, which is redoing phase one. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> Correct. And that's right. And that's the frustrating part with all of our capital planning is like once you fix something, you better put the timer about when you're going to replace it again, right? You know, and we start talking to you about like the Frontier truck's doing fine right now, but eventually you know, there's going to be so many years that Frontier truck and it's going to be back on the list again, you know, that kind of thing, you know, those kind of things. But anyway, um, that is that is the plan. Um, I wasn't at the last meeting. With these projects possibly going on at the same time, do we, we know Bill has a full boat. Do we need a uh, clerk of the works to oversee these big projects? Um, Just a question. It's a good question. So right now we are, excuse me, spacing them. So the tennis courts would be would be bidded this bidded you know this winter um, for a for a summer completion. This would not go out to bid until um, summer summer fall to be done the following summer. So this actual work on this will not actually happen until twenty four. I also think with the tennis court and likely the boiler, like we're going to be working with Berkshire Design Group again, who yeah. oversaw the track. So I think it'll be the same concept that they're really the ones on it the ground making sure that the project is done. Right. And, um, and there were more moving parts with the track. I mean, there were, you know, hopefully the first, hopefully get it to track. The, more whoever moving. did our track, I forgot the name of them, whoever did our track, hopefully we'll get this because those guys were super out there. It is a it is the bid process, know. but you know, um, they were they were wonderful yeah. to work with. The boiler will have to hire an engineer as well. They'll have to help us build the specs and the plans. While we've had the study done, we don't have that piece of the bid process ready yet. So, and, we'll and all public that. projects have to be engineered. So, <laughs> so we can't just say, hey, you know, it's a hot and cold line going into this thing. You really need you to whole engineering thing. No, they got to come and do the whole. There's actually more to it than that. But for those. Watching at home, it's like oh, you're hooking up a boiler. It's a cold line, a hot line. No, there's a lot more things they got a different. Um, it all has to be engineered going in. I imagine them somewhere in this boiler project, there's some certainty written into this thing that once we begin, we have the supply chain issues and all the other crap that's happened with trying to get things in the last two years. That we get like a third of the way through the project, they go, the the things on a barge somewhere between here and East Asprak, and nobody can find it. Right. And then um, we don't have to give it, still need the building. I mean, that's a real, real problem. We have a generator in Conway that we've been waiting for as a $60,000 purchase that is for what, like 18 months now? And that van you all approved two years ago still hasn't really even been gone to process. So the good you know, news is that you won't problem. have to replace it as soon. <laughs> <laughs> Did we get it at the old price? No, no, they, they've canceled the original order and they're charging us more for the new order, which hasn't even gone out to build yet. So I don't know. So literally a year after, you know, they said there was a supply issue. Shelly wrote them this summer and said, what, what it, what's going to happen? You know, and they said they can't fulfill your order a year later. And still getting the runaround now. Like I, I literally just had a conversation with the dealer a week ago. Because we really need the van, right, George? Really, and it does, if it's if it's a Chevy, de we'll say just say it's a Chevy dealer. Doesn't matter if we he won the bid, but it doesn't matter if we went to somebody else or can't. So you have to go. Same problem, right? Yeah. So, don't say it's state so it's on a state contract. So we have to use certain dealers on a state contract. With the new law being changed for um, the thresholds, we may be able to push out to another dealer. But this it's, the it's problem exists no matter where it is. And, you know, I think the Ford Econoline that we're trying to get is the kind of van that we want. 
it's not the Econo line anymore, is it? Yeah. The, the state approved dealers in the area, they, they get an allotment every year that they, they put in years in advance. This year, we know this because we just had to buy a truck for the fire department. Um, they, 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 uh, they, they, their allotments, and what they were expecting, they're getting one quarter of that number of vehicles. And that was a used truck. Yeah. That was a used truck yeah. that they bought in the buying, right? Yeah. I've but, even tried finding someone, there's a, a company out by Boston that will buy vans empty and then retrofit them for your needs and I, I can't even get a quote from those kind of folks so it's pretty frustrating back to the original, <laughs> but original question we will be it is it is a problem so we're not going to pull the boiler out till we have the boiler sitting in the parking lot <laughs> that's where you're going so that's the, kind of the, the timeline is going to have to be yeah and you know um yeah whoever we have for the install isn't going to take something out until they have the product to put in because they're having that problem i imagine we will make sure that, that, that might be a one out time. replace cool. water and take the other one out. I think that's you all three at one. And, and you have to remember those boilers don't fit to the door. So um, that was another kind of thing like, you know, that was one of the problems like we, because when we were talking about originally, like can we replace one and not the other, you can't, it, literally it's two Volkswagens parked next to each other in that room, Volkswagen buses. They're really that big. Um, and they're going to be downstream to a higher efficiency, smaller. I don't know what we're going to do with all that space in there. Storage. storage office <laughs> storage it's hot no it's hot uh, maybe it won't be as hot because it won't run the same way right now the outside that furnace is the temperature of the furnace <coughs> um all right so you, you can see how they vote. all what's that we need a vote we need to vote i think we need to talk about money as part of the vote as well not just approving the projects but how much from each pot so why doesn't Shelly walk us through? <laughs> we should vote each one separately because I think we should vote each one separately for the fact that um, because the cost of each one is, is, is specific. You know what I mean? And these are the things that if someone has a problem with it, they're going to come back at us with, not they don't like the, the tennis courts, but we didn't do the process properly. So let's just, let's do this one by one. And it is a lot of money, so um, such. And do you have a sense of when you would know back about the Esther three funds? So we're in the process of looking at what the state requires for a capital request. There's a form that we have to fill out. There's an amendment to the budget that they've already approved. So we have to wait for both of those pieces to come back. There might also be a requirement that they want to see the actual specs and bid documents. So it could be some time. Um, so we're basically going to front this money get it back you know we already have the ESSER money so it's just journal entry so you know we're not actually just waiting for it it's here um and that's to Darius's point whereas if we don't get approval for this until summer when we're already done these projects we could then take that money and we're only looking at asking for about a hundred thousand from ESSER not the full amount for the boiler because we just don't have that much money left um <clears throat> but we could take that money and use it and ESSER has there's uh, columns that you, can, you can't use all the money for. You have to use some money for mental health, you have to use some money for uh, uh, remediation and, and, and that kind of thing. There's different columns and some of it can be used for capital. So we couldn't use it all anyways. So I normally would agree with you that we, we vote separate um, projects, but I'm wondering what I don't want to happen is if we say, okay, 125 for the tennis court or whatever it is, um, and then we need 25,000 more. You know, I'd, I'd rather have a little bit of a buffer and like vote this pot of money that we have flexibility. We'll update you, but you know, up to X amount from, because E&D, we also have to send the approval to the towns and we are talking about using some E&D, not just school choice. So. I think we have to vote a school choice amount and an E&D amount for these projects. Okay. And then we have some flexibility on how it gets spent, if that's comfortable for everyone. Are you able to provide <clears throat> that total? Yes. So, so yes. we're voting on the project, approving the project, but we're not approving the specific financing of it? Or So I'm. you're going to approve the specifics financing, but... Okay, so let's let's talk about the real numbers, and maybe that'll help. And somebody jump in if I'm not making any sense, because my head is still not 100% clear. <clears throat> so the tennis court and the boiler, leave the roof separate because we have the band for that right now. So we have um, 
three hundred and fifty thousand for the tennis court, and let's say five hundred thousand for the boiler. So eight hundred fifty thousand. So a hundred thousand we're asking for the towns for the tennis courts. So we've got seven hundred and fifty thousand left to fund internally. My recommendation is that we take a hundred thousand of this year's E and D money, which I hate to say is not yet certified. I'm still in conversation um, with our auditors about that. So we're still working on things. Um, but but estimate. the estimate is around 440,000 right now, preliminarily. He's going back and forth with DOR about some of our encumbrances and the way that things are booked. We don't anticipate an issue. It's just how the state wants to see things come in. So if we have 440,000 in E&D, historically we've taken 200,000 to help offset the budget. That leaves us 240,000. I'm recommending we pull 100,000 of that off for the tennis courts, <clears throat> um, which leaves 150 on the tennis court and 500 for the boiler. So we're at needing 650,000, which I recommend we take from school choice. Uh, our school choice balance, as Darius mentioned quickly, has grown over the years. One, because we've been able to offset with ESSER money from ex certain expenditures. Two, if you recall, we did freeze our budget in 2020 and had some additional savings. And 2021, it went in at um, level funding, so had no increase. So there was no major change to our school choice. And we have seen an increase in our revenue. For example, I've looked already at the preliminary numbers for this year's amount. We're looking at bringing in about 100,000 more than what we budgeted for last spring. So. Did I, excuse me, did I miss a step somewhere that we get from 290 to 350? So, <clears throat> estimating higher, just in case it's higher. If we say 290 and it comes in at 325, if Jelly wants yeah. to be on the higher side. We're also going to have to pay, not included in these estimates here, is we're also going to have to pay for bid documents. We're going to have to pay for help from FERCOG. We're probably going to have to pay Berkshire Design while they've already designed the courts. I'm sure they're going to charge us to oversee and continue that walkthrough process. Um, we do have to pay for. Uh, it says that right there for the boiler plans, winter 2023, waiting on estimate. We have to have the engineering company who did the study now design the specs. So I don't think 290 is our real number. I think we are going to be closer to 325 or 350 That's for the, the tennis courts. Yeah. Would the same thing hold true for the boiler? Yeah. So um, w the three, is it 325 is the cost estimated for the boilers? And then we're estimating 175 ish for install and then those other pieces. So that's where I rounded up to 500. So th this is a lot of money. You know, we're talking about $750,000 for, or $850,000 for two projects. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, I think so. Okay, great. Can I just make sure that I've got the, I think I missed a step in the math. Okay. <clears throat> okay, 350 for tennis. 500 for boiler, that's 850, 100 comes from the town, 750 is left. Okay. 100 comes from E&D, Correct. 650 left. From school choice. And we're going to take all that from school choice. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> school choice, where it currently stands to be projected at the end of this year, is 1.9 million. So significantly higher than it has ever been in the history of the school. I think um, when I started here four years ago, we were around 1.3. We've had, again, several years of growth in school choice. The other thing that's benefiting us this year in particular is it's not just our school choice, it's our charter numbers as well. So that gets lumped into there. Our charter numbers are down compared to the prior year. So we have less kids going to charter schools, which means we're paying out less charter expenditure to the state. You know about how, much, <clears throat> about how many fewer kids? I don't have that off the top of my head. You remember at one time? Oh, yeah. Not too long ago. Okay. It was a wash. It was a, yeah. yes. it was a wash. Yes. I mean, we are really, really fortunate in this district. Darius and I talk about this a lot, and I know he hears it from some of his superintendent counterparts. I hear it from the business managers. There are districts that are upside down, regional schools on school choice and charter. We're netting. We're upside down by 100,000 or 200,000, like half a million upside yeah. down, where they have, to spend, they have to send the money out the door as part of their budget. And we're netting half a million positive. So you know between low charter and low choice going out our choice going out is very minimal and our choice coming in is significant so this is one of those things i don't want to go down a weird rabbit hole but we always hear at town meetings sometimes how you know school choice is 
is the downfall, it really helps small schools like ours stay alive. And I don't want to go there, Phil. It's, I can it's, see a bit, face, it's a bit but. foolish to celebrate the increase in it, though, because it's 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 other towns' misfortune, <clears throat> other schools imploding, and um, and and it does great harm to the sending towns. It Either can. People, yep. It also is a great benefit to some of the students. Some of the some of the reason our special our um, choice numbers are so high is because we're servicing special education students that are getting their needs met here that they weren't getting in their home district. So, you know, pros and cons to both, I suppose. So back to the math and the numbers. One point nine is a significant number for us to be holding in school choice. It's um, well past one year in arrears, which is typically best practice and what a lot of school tries to do. So I think we're in a safe spot at 650. That brings us down to 1.2 after that 650. And uh, looking forward in the FY24 budget, we're still only spending what we're bringing in. We're not exceeding revenue. So we should be able to stay around that one, 1 1.2 million, which is a comfortable spot for us to be in should there be some other Catastrophe. Catastrophic event that we're not prepared Thank God for, for a rainy fund. Rainy <clears throat> yeah. day fund. We're really fortunate. And, you know, we have, this is sort of our capital stabilization fund, that this has functioned in the same manner of what we're trying to set up because now we have the ability to spend nearly a million dollars on these projects that our towns can't absorb the cost for. So we're really And we fortunate. don't have to ask <clears throat> towns to spend school choice money either. We do not. Really, right? So there are, there is no coming from the capital committee. There is no capital request from to the towns this year, other than paying their, other than their assessment on the bond and the task force. And, and well, the CPA. That's not you know that's not it's different than the capital. We're trying to give them an avenue where it's not going to affect their free cash. And again, this is in cooperation talking with your you know the select board members over multiple times about there are certain towns that don't have the free cash this year. Um, if we came to them with any capital improvements, we'd, they'd simply say, we can't do that this year. Um, so by saying, you know, going after the CPA <coughs> funds, which is a silo of money um, in, in, in relatively small amounts when you, when you talk about some of the CPA projects, it's a kind of a smart, you know, it's smart and, you know, the town should be, um, as you said, you should be very pleased that we're able to take care of these projects in house and not go to them for another, for, with another bill. So the, the vote, I think, the reason I'm asking for flexibility is say we have 100,000 in E&D and we say, okay, we're gonna earmark that for tennis courts. If we only need 90,000, we could probably really use that 10,000 for the boiler project. So if we have some flexibility and have the vote be that we're approving um, the, total number. the total number with 100 from E&D and 650 from school choice, for the tennis courts and the boilers, it gives us a little bit of flexibility on paying the bills when and they actually come in. If we were to, if we <clears> were <throat> have a need to go over that number, we'd have to come back to it. If we ask for it, it's one lump sum could be up being someone who's definitely opposed to tennis courts. Does it get caught up in the boiler at that point? I mean, um, I didn't hear what you said. Uh, if, if the tennis courts being, didn't if pass. We don't get into one sum, does do we have to if, if someone's against one portion or the other? But we just run into a, a roadblock in one area or the other. I think both now caught up in that roadblock. Well, there won't be any. I don't think there'll be any roadblock because there, really because asking they're only asking for a hundred thousand broken up percentage. So I guess we would have to come back and have a conversation if the towns rejected the hundred thousand request and then reconsider. Right, and they could also <laughs> reject. We do if we do spend um, E and D. We do send a letter to the town that says we are going to be spending it. In this fashion they have 30 days to hold a special town meeting um, to stop the spending of the ND in that fashion usually we in the past we've given reasonable plans and that kind of stuff and they've been kind of approved by the select board so that could also be you're right that could that snag um, we would have to bring up the we'd have to have a school committee meeting decide how we want to address it and then do a revote to move things. I think you yeah. underestimate the power of this pickleball. Yeah. I mean, I really <laughs> think that they have a lot of sway with us. It's all the bounce off with the air. It's like you're running to a, a snag. You, in the beginning of all this, you said you're still waiting to hear back from Deerfield. Deerfield says, no, we don't want to do this. So Deerfield hasn't requested information from us for their CPA application. The other three towns has have asked us 
to help fill out the CPA application. So if we go ahead and just vote this, <clears throat> we're just like with the track, we're just going to hand it to the town. Well, that's an and internal thing for them. We don't care where they, they get the money from. Right. Right. It'd be get a good, it'd be get a good idea for some, CPA, somebody CPA, here get it wherever you go into the town administrator and say, do you know about this? Well, so I, basically, I if you vote, week. if you vote this tonight, I will make phone calls tomorrow. It says this is officially the request is going to come. From, we let them know because they're they're in their planning process that this is what we plan on doing. They know that you're voting it tonight. If <laughs> if you vote this positive, I will be contacting them tomorrow that we are moving forward with this request and uh, you know, and so on and so forth. I'll contact you know Casey and Deerfield and say you guys need anything from us, that kind of thing. Um, a lot of them are just starting their work now. They waited till after. Um, the end of December, New Year's, and then they're kind of just now their budget season. So, um, her saying that Deerfield hasn't asked, it may also be that the CBA committee hasn't met either, yeah. which I think is the, the, really the case. I'm not sure if there's so in each town does it differently. So, each each form is different, each you know, uh, that kind of thing, and the approval process is different as well. Um, it's very interesting. I think it's con interesting. Conway CPA no longer is. Um, approving the projects to go to town. They are just making sure they meet the qualifying areas. I just think that's very interesting that they're doing that. And everything goes to the town as long as it qualifies for a CPA. But it's a smaller town. Deerfield, you know, maybe that would take up half a town meeting. I, I don't know. It's, it's a good idea that it's tennis court is very much a recreational facility which is in the cpa statute it's this is like a very it, and we do have past practice on that too if people talk to you they, they were the the uh 35 000, i believe it was 35 it was forty five thousand dollars repairs that were done were paid by cpa done by marty barrett in 2013. but there the cpa is also like you're saying about the funds being divided the towns are, are restricted this percentage goes to recreation this percentage goes to to uh housing this percent so they they have to operate with, right. have to with their cpa right and again That's looking at the, looking at those numbers those aren't again for cpa <laughs> requests those aren't huge asks but and, and although you haven't talked about this there's the issue of how the towns are going to uh, fund their uh portion of the track expenses this year and because because we we borrow money for that the, the school can't the school it's inappropriate for the school then to be asking CPA for that money because it's already been borrowed, but the towns can <coughs> fill those applications out. And that's what in, in Conway the Select Board's filling out the application for the for the CPA to fund that portion the, that service of, for the track. Yeah, we'll talk year. about that piece of the assessment a little bit further in the budget process when we get there, but we are paying interest only again this year, so it's not significant yet. No, it's not. When we when we hit um, principal it'll change dramatically, but <clears throat> it makes the passage of the budget, the school budget, more likely when you can whittle the budget down. So can I clarify that we're voting on approving both projects and the 850 from the... I mean, the, that's my recommendation. You guys get to make that call. I think the only trade-off is the you know, simplicity from the funds have to shift from one to the other, right? And then the only thing is the risk if something gets on your butt. You know, I defer to people who have more experience as to whether that... You, well, we you think, have I full think. authority over school choice funds. So because we can move things around, if one project gets stuck, if, it, if they're going after the funding, they can go after your E&D. Realistically, you weren't going to, I know you said you'd split E&D, but you really wouldn't want to split E&D because you'd be asking two different requests at town that would get complicated. You probably want to put it all in one project, right? Well, I think we can word the request that it'll be for these two projects. Okay. But I know if you just move to one, so if there's questions that you're just dealing with. That's the, the tennis court is not the one that's going to be budget, but if you have yeah. Boilers, there's going to be a delay and there's going to be a problem. I mean, I guess the know. biggest risk is we're potentially on the line for another hundred thousand dollars, which still with 1.2 million in school choice, we could yeah. fund the tennis courts on our own. And also understand <laughs> that this is going to happen over another fiscal year. So these projects are going to take two years to be done. So we will be replenishing some of our, some of our school choice and some of our E&D. I mean, E and D, 
we've been fortunate that we always have savings and you know that's because of our conservative nature that number could come in lower and we have been using AD to offset the assessment so problem is in you guys understand how that works is that if you do it every year you have a fake assessment because your assessment is two hundred thousand dollars less than what it should be because you've been down you've been paying off it with previous year's funds every year is it, it, just to break down E and D even simpler, you're using last year's funds two hundred thousand dollars. We've done that for the last five years, <clears throat> so we at some point probably have to wean ourselves off of using E and D to, to, to bring down the assessment. Because if there's going to be a year you can't do it, and then our assessment is going to go even higher because we don't knock it down with that money. I don't know where people think about that. I'm just kind of thinking about these practices that. Be complicated so every time we look at e and d immediately i say well two hundred thousand dollars less than it actually is so we're gonna spend a hundred thousand dollars of it and then we have another hundred thousand dollars for a rainy day fund out of e and d because the other two hundred thousand dollars we're probably going to put toward assessment because we did it in years past mm -hmm. i hope i didn't blow anybody's mind there but this is just how we've been kind of doing things <coughs> well i would say we go for the e fifty. I, mean, I know i brought up concern but i think the risk sounds minimal yeah yeah you want to be able to yeah, you want you want to? You wanna, <laughs> yeah, I can I can make a motion and just read what I have in front of me. Yeah. Great. Okay. So the motion is that we will undertake capital projects of the tennis court and boiler replacement, three hundred with an estimated three hundred and fifty going for the tennis court, five hundred going for the boiler. We'll ask for a hundred thousand from the town. We'll take a hundred thousand from E and D and six hundred and fifty from school choice. And that's the full motion. Is it helpful to have the cost broken down by each project or to say 850 for both projects if you're looking at moving funds around? Go on hamstring yourself. I mean, I yeah, just, that's yeah, a good I question. Think, yeah. As a whole, As a whole you have the total, the total price. Of 850 right. for both projects and the yeah. wording of that. Right. And it, it's, yeah. you know, the projects are as presented here. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so same motion is just, it starts with 850,000 for capital projects. Tennis court and boiler. Yeah. I think we should have tennis court and boiler. Yeah. yeah. CPA have to get in there or from the towns? Is that good enough? I, CPA does not have, it's not our CPA money, so the town decides. Towns could pay for the 100000 they want. <coughs> yeah. yeah. The, we are asking the CPA to pay for it. If they don't fund it through CPA, we didn't ask for it to pay for it in a different manner. I thought when we talked to the town administrators, I'm specifically thinking of Brian said, you asked me for $50,000, I'm gonna figure out how we pay for it. If we wanna use CPA. That was at the track club, not the, not the tennis court. And we didn't ask for CPA money for the track. We just said, you can pay, you can pay your bill with CPA if you want. It's your bill, you can pay for it however you want. Yeah, they could pay with an air. They we are actually going money, to use CP. CPA. We're going to use CPA money. committee. We're not. I don't think we are. No. no. Sounds not. like you supplied already we the information the to the towns info. to do the application, right? We're asking the towns for a hundred thousand dollars for these two projects, or for the tennis court specifically. How the town funds it is not within our control. Okay. Right? Correct. Right. Anyone else? But the CPA for the tennis courts is the closest thing to a slam dunk that you've done in years because you, I think very few people here understand the true power of the pickleball. And you just, in, num <laughs> in numbers, they're astounding. Yes. Conway pickleballers, there's close to 200 of them in the little pickleballer club just in Conway. And uh, do you, you guys haven't built anything yet? That we're building our own special pickleball court. They already going to be a home, like, away in home games. This is going to be. And Conway already has a budding rivalry, rivalry with the Deerfield pickleballers. Oh. Chris is with the report. They're going to have a whole section. It's going to be sports, and then they're going to be like pickleball. And, and the pickleballers want these tennis courts done. I they was kidding when really I was like, them. it's worth in that estimate to look at like, maybe <clears throat> a little more space. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wish we could. Yeah. We got a club now. Next year we'll vote on it being a Instead of doing this, we'll do it for the parking lot. <laughs> That's how we'll pay for the parking lot. We'll be like parking lot by day, pickle boards by first. <laughs> I bet they'd be okay with that. Yeah. 
I'm pretty sure when we talk to them, but if, if you're not sold on that, then. So what's Deerfield going to do? If Deerfield doesn't want to give the $48,000, what's the, what's the worst we would do? Take the 48,000 and we pay it out of school choice. No, they don't no, all four yeah, have to agree, right? Four out of Aqua right? Funds or yeah, wherever they pick it. That's their share. It's like any other capital. So right? Mostly, I just want to point right. of order. We have a motion on the table that we can second. Second for the purpose mm -hmm. of discussion, so we can keep talking. Right. <laughs> Great. Right. Yeah, just didn't want to leave like that hanging. Amendment, for instance, right? We could totally so do a friendly amendment. Out, I'm, looking at, I'm looking at the application that Darius and I worked on. I no, no, of course. Well, it says here. Like, it says here. Request one hundred thousand from Fort Town. Town determines funding source. CPA warrant. ARPA or other. Right there, right? Right there. It says it right there in black and white. So the CPA application says full name of entity submitting application, and it says Conway Grammar School School Committee. That was for the stage curtain, right? An epic application. Oh my it's god! So funny. Uh, and it says the balance will be paid by. ED it says Frontier Regional Cash School funds. Committee. On the application, on the application that we're giving to the town to fill out for Conways, it says Frontier Regional School Committee as is the entity submitting the application. <clears throat> doesn't matter how it doesn't matter if it's no matter what you call it, it's me going in there and asking for it. Well, I just want to have the motion proper yeah. so that we're legally. I feel like there was consensus in the subcommittee meetings that it was CPA from all four towns. So there's no surprises here at all. No, it's no surprise. And I don't expect it to fail, but we should plan it with the expectation that it doesn't go the way we want it to go so that we can have contingency. And I think the idea is that each, if a CPA is to shoot it down, then we have to come back and ask them to put it on their winter warrant. Or this committee could decide to use other funds. Well, we would have to cover the project in place. Right. So, I mean, it seems Is it broad enough? Because we're talking about $100,000 from towns. Can to make it an amendment that it says from the towns or CPA funding? I think we do that to protect ourselves. And then that, way, that covers if we the towns do CPA. One town says we'd rather just take it from free cash. They have the ability to do that. And that works. Motion to amend. Great. Yeah. You have to do. Yeah, we have to do a vote. You have to on do, the do a vote the amendment and then vote to. Just tell me when you're when you're ready. After the amendment. yeah, do you want me to read the amendment? Sure. So, it's now the wording is: we will request a hundred thousand. We request a hundred thousand dollars from the towns or from CPA funding divided by school share. Did I have written right now? Does that seem right? To be funded by the towns through CPA or other sources, other sources. or other sources. Okay. okay, to be funded by the towns <laughs> through CPA. That gives the town flexibility. Sure why we're getting involved in the towns how to fund this thing? From a hundred thousand from the towns. Period. Wiseman and Whiteley, you figure out where you're going to get it from. You're going to get it from CPA. If you're going to get it from our book, you're going to get it out of the cookie jar. I don't care. But I, 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 that noose will end up around our neck if we start putting in CPA, this, that, or the other thing. We're going to get shot. Give it alone. Period. Hundred thousand. Come. You better give it to us. You figure out where it comes from. It's like any other capital article, any other year. Yeah. The only issue is that out of the capital planning committee, with the select board members are there, they said they'd like to see us try to pay for it as CPA. We can't pay for it. Right. But we can suggest. Can. I guess we can suggest. I mean, they got to carry it. I'm hoping that our select board members mm -hmm. that are part of that committee are going to carry the carry the rock the rest of the way after we give it to yeah, them. Yeah, I mean, the capital article for eleven thousand four hundred eleven dollars, or an article for a CPA. 
411, that's the yep. same thing. Yep. Is the confusion there because we are on the application as the entity requesting yeah, that's, this? I so think what's that us. if we have it on the warrant that we are including that as a potential source, then that kind of validates that we are on the yeah. application requesting these funds. Yeah. Is that? I think throwing in the or doesn't hurt. I agree with you 100%, but I think covering us in the vote that says town free cash and or CPA or other sources or other yeah. sources, yeah. Was on the <clears throat> and Bill, I just think we need to do it at this point because of the, you know, we have to have that word again, something about the CPA in there because that was the process up to this point. We've had, you know, it's been harmonious up to this and we're really, yeah, well, I wasn't you know privy I mean? so, to that part of the process. I'm just <clears throat> trying to avoid it. Chris, when you're ready, you need to do a roll call on the amendment first. Yeah. So the amendment currently reads. We will request a hundred thousand to be funded by the towns through free cash, CPA, or other sources. So we got it. Okay. That was. Yeah. And then seconded. I think. Did I second that? I think thought so. But. Okay. Great. <laughs> I think they did. Okay. Or, uh, yeah. Whatever. Right. Right. You might have just okay. been the hand okay. I saw. <laughs> you want to do a roll call? Uh, you want to read the yeah. read the roll? Sure. You want me to read the names and you just write them in? Does it be or a roll call vote? vote? I mean, can you just be a majority vote? To pass the amendment? Don't don't do, do, do we don't have to do roll calls anymore? For all the here. That's really Okay, there's no one on. Yeah, there's no one on. Okay. Anybody on the two? All, all in favor? You accept the amendment first, and then they yeah, got a vote yeah, on the motion. Yeah. All in favor of the amendment as read, raise your hand. So moved. Actually, yeah. You're back to the original motion. All in favor? So moved. And what do you want to do with the roof? Is that? Oh, the roof, we do need a separate vote on. <laughs> the roof should be really easy. <laughs> you, tell us what, you tell us what to do. Um, so we're looking for a vote to authorize borrowing of because we do not have this four hundred thousand. It is already approved, but I need to go in. We will not do it until July, so we're in the new year. Um, but we need to borrow the four hundred thousand, um, and you need to approve phase one of the roof project up to four hundred thousand dollars. Right, that's what we're looking for Correct. right now. And then what we will do is we will have a discussion with you. It's probably the best way to proceed on that. We'll put it out to bid next fall. Bids will come back and we'll have a discussion about where we're at, about how we do stage one. If we have enough to do both sections or if we're just going to do one, we'll come back to you um, with that. I think it's probably the easiest. It's too many moving parts just, you know, to project that far away. And we'll know if we're going to have, have extra S or money. And money and that that correct. And if we need to apply any other school choice or S or money to that. Yeah. Or, do, you, do we put in where? So we just say borrowing four hundred thousand for thing. phase one. For phase one, yeah. Um, from the band, um, from use the band, band. yeah. The band. What is the rest of the thing? Four hundred thousand doesn't cover either option. It does not cover either option. So we're hoping we'll recoup some money from ESSA yes, funding, right. and then there may be a further discussion about additional school choice use. But we're going to cross that bridge down the road we want to get this first step moving right with the idea <laughs> that that four hundred thousand will cover the gym that the boys locker room area roof which we're having the most leaks in and so we're definitely going to be doing that and then we'll see what the section section exit the next section costs let's say together it's i'll throw the number they have like four five hundred seventy five thousand so then how do we go up with one hundred seventy five thousand? do we have some did we get relief from desi to use that money or do we just use school choice or do we say not now we're just going to do the boys locker we'll make that decision when we have that official number do you want to read it chris Pardon? yes the motion is um to authorize roof replacement phase one capital project as described in supplementary materials using up to four hundred thousand dollars of band funds right borrowing four hundred thousand borrowing okay right borrowing four hundred thousand yeah, it's a yes. It's a loan. From our bond anticipation note, that's what the band stands for. <clears throat> I'm 
big was that? That's, that's at the old interest rate. What? How big is the band? No, it'll go out for bid at whatever the market rates are in July. For whatever portion you, you want of. So we can, we will have to renew this um, 930 that we're already borrowed and add the 400,000. Um, <clears> we're going to be in a position come next fall to be discussing how we want to proceed because we only have one more year of interest only. You know, what type of loan do we want to roll that into long term? So um, it might be beneficial to split up the 400,000 from the 930. But we have work with um, Unibank as our financial advisor, so they'll give us some guidance on. We'll get done just in time with the Fed makes the last interest rate hike. That will go up. No. Yeah. You can put down. You can put down yourself as a motion. Oh, sure. Me as a second yeah. or something. I'm like second. That. Yeah. All in favor for the roof phase one? So moved. That didn't take too long. <laughs> it's a lot of money. Thank you. Thanks. And Bill. Bill's still yeah. on work and yeah. subcommittee. Darius, thank you for already getting the Conway applications in. <laughs> for the <laughs> pickleball? No, for, for the for the uh, for the CPA. We already got the app we had, we had to do the applications immediately. New business uh, budget timeline. Do you, do you want to share number four from the application? I don't have it in front of me, but yeah, it's worth I sharing. probably remember it's what worth, it there is. Were, there was another one too. There was number four and there was like number 11 or something. But yeah, you should. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I have it. So they, they, they ask, just because we need levity, levity for just a moment, they ask a ton of questions. And one of them is, how will this project, this is the, the curtain in the gym at Conway. How will it protect the, what is it? The, <clears throat> I'm getting it you because get, you, you got it. You got to hear it. Conway's got his curtain. Fireproof. It's fireproof. That's the problem. It's Have you tested it? Gardens, matches, matches. Yeah. Oh yeah. In what way? <laughs> in what ways will this? This is the curtain um, application I had to follow. In what ways will the project protect endangered resources? I wrote, town board members will be able to hide behind it at town meeting if necessary. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Phil. <laughs> oh my God, I was laughing. He's he sends it to me to proofread. I'm like, really? Oh, we, we submitted it that way. I said, if they don't have a sense of humor, oh we're not getting the curtain. <clears throat> All right, what's next? Budget, Budget timeline. Budget and Ugh. timeline. Do Budget you want to do the January budget spiel? Sure. <laughs> we met for the first time tonight. We our first little preliminary glimpse of Ed Shelby's artwork. And uh, nothing's, nothing's going out yet for public consumption because we just we had our first look at it like an hour and a half ago. So, the next time we get together, you guys will have some things to look at because we're so far out with uh, the governor's budget and everything else. You really, the pieces that really make the thing fitter, they're all just abstract really abstract right now the towns are going to be barking for him pretty soon we don't have them we'll figure that one out because the new government gets five extra weeks this year or when they get elected or whatever that's, that's so that goes right into what the timeline is talking about so this year's timeline is going to be a little weird because as bob just said a new governor is allowed five additional weeks to present their budget which puts the budget at the first week in march okay we have to have march 1st is wednesday by the by the 11th, we have to have a budget to the towns. That's okay. So, days you know, the governor doesn't know that we have a regional agreement and know all this. I'm sure she's very concerned about that. So, <laughs> so we have to, if that budget comes out on Wednesday or Thursday, we're going to have to have a meeting like probably right now we're scheduled for the 7th, which is a Tuesday. We're probably going to have a meeting on the 7th and then 8th. Okay. And we'll probably. Um, I'm saying when I say we probably, it means I'm thinking out loud, but we will probably have our public hearing on the 7th, because that'll be the draft of it. You can always change your budget after the public hearing, the following meeting, and approve it on the 8th. But you really, having one meeting, when the, we will, without the governor's budget, we don't know the assessments. Now, we can project, but we said 
we are very nervous on doing our own math, you know, with it's a very complicated formula and then four towns and yada, yada, yada. If we're wrong on that, it's going to be very ugly if we start sharing that. I'm so, not wearing that. And, that and Shelly doesn't. <laughs> And Shelly's the one doing the math, so if she's saying that she, you know, so we have templates that are given to us by our association, not the state, um, to help guide us so we have an idea of what, what to expect. Um, but anyway, so we're not going to be able to present that until the week of the 5th. And it's, you know, so we have, so we're going to have to pre schedule two meetings that week, the 7th and the 8th, and basically have back to back meetings on the budget. Um, the good news is, is that maybe just be only the budget, so it means we'll be rel could be relatively short if we're the rest of the budget will be developed, you know, where we're at percentage points. And if we had to, you know, shift things that would happen that week, but you know, the, the bulk of the information would be already be out there <coughs> to you folks. Does that make sense? So we'll work to have, based on what the subcommittee came up with, we'll work to have a draft for you to look at in um, February, but it it's probably, it definitely won't have the assessment numbers if the budget's not released. She has five weeks, maybe she'll be quicker, we can hope um, that we'll get numbers before March 1st, but. So I think we go, so I have to be able to, I have to post the, um, the, the public hearing on the budget 14 days prior to the hearing. So I'm going to go ahead and post the seventh as our public hearing. And then we can, and as we get closer, we just need to have 48 hours notice to post the eighth as the second meeting of the, if that, if the seventh. So let's say the governor does, um, let's say she, you know, releases the budget, you know, the, you know, during, you know, during the week of the 20th or something like that, we'll be able to, we could have a, we could set a meeting prior to that and then have our public, um, discussion and then have our public hearing and vote the budget the same night it is the week of does that sound i do need to pick the date of the public hearing 14 days in advance though because it's got to go on paper we might get lucky and the new governor may come out in february with the thing. it's possible it's possible yeah. but we got to plan that it's not yeah i do i say this every year so here i'll go well, I don't want it to give us the perception that having the public hearing at seven o'clock and vote on the budget at eight, because that tells anybody who's watching that what I came to the public meeting to tell you cannot possibly be incorporated into that budget because you're going to vote on it in half an hour. So we at least need to do it the following the day. next day. Okay. You know, I, I think because you got you got to give some respect to the process, the optics of the thing. You know, it looks like we're yeah okay public hearing okay are, you, are we done yet? Let's go vote. That the perception is that the public hearing means nothing if we do it that way. Please don't do it that way because it doesn't, it doesn't look good for us. And the public hearing is going to be even more important, I think, this year because typically the towns have a sense of where our budget numbers are in advance of the public hearing. We've likely already met with a couple of them, reviewed the numbers. We've given the info to town administrators so they can start planning. They may have asked questions. That's not really going to happen this yeah, year. Yeah, that, that's that, that's uh, typically why you don't <clears throat> really see a lot of the town fathers at the public hearing because we year. have we have taken the show on the road yeah. already. So we probably so what I'm hearing is make the public hearing on the seventh, and a school committee on the, meeting on the eighth, which sets um, Tuesday and Wednesday. Thursday currently Deerfield has a school committee meeting, so. Uh, while you're in, while you're going posting happy, you can post the budget subcommittee meeting for the eighth before this meeting. So if we have to do something as a result of yeah, yeah, what yeah. we absorbed on Monday night or the seventh, we'll do it before we come in here. Um, and Shelly will have a whole half hour to get it ready to pass up. You could ask for more than that. Okay. Thank God for Shelly. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for Excel. So I will send this. I will send this. I will send this all out to you tomorrow. For those of you who are kind of like trying to, you know, so that you have it in writing, so you can put it in the calendars and such. That the public hearing will be on the seventh. The final of the, the budget will be on the eighth. We hang on. Let me just make sure there's two more. This is February. March. 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 Okay. Miss Shelley, pass right out backwards in that chair. This is February. <laughs> Yeah, we could, we could, 
ask Deerfield to move their school committee meeting to the 8th and then have our meetings on Tuesday and Thursday. That would give us a little bit of time to discuss any of the changes. That's only a, you think you move, it's pretty just moving stuff around. Though. It's not going to be like right. And if there's people doing changes, it's changing. It's not like you got to go. The point it's going to be really hard is if something came out of the public hearing that was like, hmm. The decision was made to cut hundred thousand dollars from the budget. Yeah. Like that's really a problem. And that would be an in a day's un turnaround. Unanticipated job <laughs> from the blind. Yeah. Right. What is the I guess I'll ask what the kid by maybe I should know it. What's the penalty if you miss the the regional agreement and don't come in by the eleventh? I think you could be sued civilly and be forced by a judge to comply next time. Or chat to have somebody change their town meeting. Date. They can't. No, it's, can't in bylaws, yeah, it's in their bylaws. It's in their bylaws. We've already we, we've kind of vetted that. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe when we have nothing else to do, we can talk about. No, of, of all the things, of all the legal jeopardies reason. that you can do, of all the legal jeopardies. Uh, all right, so we won't we'll, we'll, we won't play with that date. Yeah. Always know what the punishment is <laughs> when you play with the dates, right? You know, that's kind of a. Um, you just hope there's not a major snowstorm there. Now that will happen. All right, so Zoom. Yeah, we'll do seven. Still we'll do within seven the today. timeline for remote meetings. What's that? Still within the timeline. Maybe it for could remote be remote. Meetings. Oh, yeah. oh, great! If it's snow, right? Yes, snow yes. Snow. Good point. Good point. Very good point. <laughs> you got internet up in Nashville? Yeah. Or Plainfield? I got high speed. Oh, wow! <laughs> I already know I'll be out of work. That's why I guess I was asking. Yes. So join us remotely. From the, the sunny shores of wherever the heck you are. Bahamas. Or you know, we'll curse you the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We can continue. All right. So, yes. Yeah, so, I will get that information out. That is the uh, budget timeline. The next question is school choice. Yes. Um, so, normally we do this later in the year. Um, George has requested that we do it earlier because um, it allows for better planning by the school because we get the school choice applications in we usually hold them until you guys make a vote and then um, usually it is in april and then families aren't really finding out until mid-april or may what their plans are for next year um, it puts us in the same cycle as other schools and private schools um, so as people are making their plans by knowing in advance that um, that you know we're accepting school choice and that we can go ahead come you said february 1st Right, February yep. 1st, yep. in February, that you've been accepted to Frontier for the following school year. So we're kind of moving up the process. And then if people haven't, then it, it allows the lottery system to also happen, and people after that point can come in um, on a uh, first come, first serve basis of leftover slots. Make sense? Move to approve administration's request. But also in the past, you, you, you have the discretion on for numbers also, right? <laughs> I'm looking, yeah. I'm looking, I am looking at George. I'm looking. <laughs> Yes. But that's what we've usually done before at the discretion of the principal, the numbers, you know it. But this is going to help us with scheduling as well. Oh, yeah. Which is really important because we're in the front. We're going to be in, we're already in the process of starting that. We have Bill made the motion. Second. Bill makes a second. Tell me when you're ready. All in favor? So moved. <coughs> and we know about the. Four thousand dollars from Yankee Candle. You do need to vote to accept. I know. Um, any other discussion on that? I'll make a motion to accept the four thousand dollars. Second. Gladly. <laughs> but that has nothing to do with uh, graduation and uh, scholarships. Yeah, that's so. all in favor. Here's this money. So moved. Um, did we receive the, are they, are they still funding the scholarships? Yeah, we got, we got the scholarships as well. Um, I have nothing, uh, poor Lynn's not here to talk about the collaborative. And Darius, do you have any quick words of wisdom? Yeah, I do want to give you guys an update. Um, sorry. <laughs> I'm too mice here. It's getting late in the day. Um, I do want to give, just give you kind of overview of some of the superintendent's report. I know, um, it was hit part of packets, but I do want to talk about the CSMI equity audit because it does involve you. So they will be visiting. So right now they've sent out um, 
to gain our equity audit. They sent out, we have the information now that we're collecting data. It's a lot of data, over 60 data <coughs> points um, that the central office is putting together and different administrators are putting together to send to them to review prior to the visit. They are visiting March 20th to 22nd. They are gonna to wanna to interview school committee members. So what we will be doing is reaching out to folks um, if you wanna be interviewed and be part of that. I don't know if they're gonna be doing individual or small groups, um, but they are gonna be looking at different, um, different, or many, we have, it'll be interesting. On, we have to figure out how they're gonna approach our district because we have a lot of school committee members. You know, normally, so they usually ask, in their questions, they ask like, can you give us a list of all your school committee members in their tenure? And so on, and all this kind of information because looking for equity within our group. I'm like, okay, I have 23 school committee members. And so, so you know, he's like, oh, we're gonna have to work out how we're going to do that. So we're not gonna do individual interviews well 23, which they may do in like a seven member district. So some of that's still to come. So we'll figure out what that is. But um, I do want to put on your radar if you are, you know, you want to be a part of that, that, that kind of thing that they are gonna do. <coughs> so those are three days they'll be here. What is that? March the 20th to the 22nd. Those three days. You're Clark, you're Clark then, bye-bye. Um, they also will be doing uh, surveys to the community, um, including parents and staff. And then we also are collecting um, we're collecting work from the classrooms. Um, sorry, the entire artifacts from the classroom are around different um, points where they want to look at. You know, they want to look at what are we doing for diversity work um, and equity work, and then some other kind of lesson things so they can look at rigor across the district and that kind of thing. And they're basically doing these. They do these different things. Cause they're looking at the data. And then they're looking, they're going to have, a, they'll be visit in the classrooms and in our schools for those three days, um, and then interviews. And they're going to be triangulating information that they're collecting to make sure that it, you know, if we're saying we're presenting and doing this, they want to see that they're doing this. And so they have that as part of their, their equity. Audit. So any questions on that? So there'll be more information coming on that. It's kind of, I did send out a note, you guys should be all on that, um, to the community, letting people know that this is coming and that, because there's going to start being talk about it as it gets closer and closer. Yeah, I guess that's, Part of my question is what the plan is for communication to both to help to have there be buy-in from the school, but inside the school community and outside the school community. Yes. So right now I'm visiting, and I just admit with Sunderland <laughs> staff today, I'm going to each staff meeting to explain to all the teachers and staff, you know, what the process is, what their role meant, their their role is, can and can't be, and that kind of stuff. And also reducing anxiety, because some people say, there's an audit and they're gonna come into your classroom. You know, it sends a lot of fear out there. So I'm doing that um, there. You know, I started with the first communications there. I don't have all the information of like when they're going to do the uh, survey and such. So I'm just kind of like preparing people that it's coming. When I get that, then I'll be sending that out as well. I'm not sure. Am I answering your question? Yeah. I mean, I guess uh, is that something that they provide assistance with they, to give more communication about exactly what this process is to help to make sure that it to lay some of that anxiety and fear about what this process is and what we hope to to get out of this um no i don't i don't think they're gonna they'll, they're gonna provide the survey and such and they collect yeah. the but we don't do that internally they do that externally um we're gonna have to provide the communication i mean i have you know i'm pulling the information like the last letter was written from their you know their proposal and such um, i can see if they have templates and such or maybe can provide guidance for you as to how other people have approached that situation mm -hmm. where there may be some concern about fear or anxiety or whether or not this is a process of checking a box versus making some more robust changes which may be on the flip side of the fear and anxiety right. maybe this is a i'm just going to go through the motions space as opposed to making some sure. more meaningful change that right and understanding that the the audit is really looking at your systems and processes of the district and do you have those in place and, and i shared this before i think that when i i read a sample report we don't have all the systems and, pro and of course it's a utopian district that they're you're modeling against so um but you know i think there's gonna be plenty to build a strategic plan from this when it's done um there isn't a lot of you know, the community input between the interviews and the survey, that, that's the community input. They're going to be looking about what's, what we have for placing structures, you know, what we have for policies, how we're implementing those policies, and are they seeing it in their visits? So that's kind of the cross the cross kind of discussion there. So I guess I, I, I'll, I'll take any feedback on how to communicate that, what's not being communicated or questions out there. 
Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, I can ask what they do for other districts do for communication on it. Yeah, I think that um, that would be probably worthwhile on both ends of the spectrum. That there may mm -hmm. be people that don't care. This is a process that you go through, but there may be people both that have some fear and concern that they are going through this process. But there may be some people on the other side that have some concern that this may not be sure. the step to make some appropriate changes. And I think it's probably worthwhile to see how to approach communication for both ends of the spectrum. Because at the end of the day, whatever comes out of this, you have to have enough community buy-in to take some steps. Yes, Sonia. I, I say, comes out. yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, I think get the fact that we're committing with a mandate, right? right. <laughs> but well, I mean, that's, the fact that we're committing to look at this with its lens. I mean, I've seen the reports; they're not gentle. You know what I mean? They're, it's not a checkbox report. They're, we're going to have, having read other reports, we're going to have deficiencies that that we're going to have to make a plan about how we're going to address in what order. Um, for those who, you know, I don't know what groups are saying, thing, but if they're saying this, that, oh, is this the, the checkbox report? It doesn't mean anything. They should wait till they see the report before they make that judgment because I really feel us doing that is very, us doing this report is very brave. And I think it's very brave for a district because we are not afraid to expose the fact that we are not a perfect district and we do have a lot of work to do. And this is going to help us hone in on those areas that we need to do next. I, I really do believe that. And, I, and I'm saying that because I've read other reports. They gave sample. I'm like, okay, what does the report look like? Well, this is one. And I'm reading through it. And I'm like, wow, we can change the name of the school very easily to our school on some of these lines that they're putting in there because we don't have many of the systems in place that you should have in order to have a more equitable school system. So, yeah. I, so, I think it's worthwhile to explore how to. Well, I definitely want to communicate out if, if there's if there are people, you know, and so, yeah, I'll take give me feedback on that. And um, I can ask them if they have what they, they provide exemplars from other schools that, that do that kind of thing as well. Makes sense. All right. Um, and just my two other ones were the, the superintendency agreement. Our last meeting um, kind of went off the rails. Um, and so we do need to, in the new year, I thought we'd have some kind of draft by now, but we're, we're working on it. So that's more to come. And then um, I started a outreach to the South County Senior Center, and I invited the seniors to come to the building on, uh, to come to Frontier on the 31st um, to visit the school, take a tour, talk about school, how it's changed, how it's not changed, um, and even have discussions about um, you know, talking about what we're doing around equity, questions around that, and just really kind of opening up the building. I think it's a, I, I got stole this idea from the MASC conference that another district did this, really bought buy-in. Also during the cold months, they're looking for activities to do, coffee conversations, seeing kids in action. Um, I think every generation looks at the new generation as this, you know, I think, anyway, maybe I'm stereotyping that kind of thing, but it, it, it really just to bring them in, feel part of the community and see where they're, you know, See where taxes are going when we say we're doing these things, and we've got a lot of great things going on in this building. And when you visit during the day, uh, which I encourage all of you to, um, it's really fun to walk around the building and seeing the kids doing their thing, the teachers doing their thing. Feeding them too. What's that? You feeding them. Coffee. And I'm giving them coffee. There I was told coffee. You if you give them coffee and pastries, they will show up. That's right. So, um, so I'm kind of excited about that. Making that kind of outreach. Okay. Um, Do you want me to go further in the, your questions to be on that? On health? Yeah. Well, I mm -hmm. guess it was going to be a good spin in to inviting seniors into the building, but I'm <laughs> wondering if there's a, a good way that we can be a little more robust with the health. Like, right now, what I have seen tends to be kind of we're passing this along because the state said that we should give you an update that RSV is out there. The state gave us this thing that includes lots of stuff, including like pet safety during the holiday. I mean, it's really broad. And I think we could do a better job with bringing some of that stuff home. If we're going to do some of that health reach, it's really hard to see this post about health and not understand what's happening. It's very easy to kind of, yeah, let's see, we got that email and to not have it really give a sense of what's going on in this community. I mean, we're talking mm -hmm. about three big viruses that hopefully are 
coming down at this mm -hmm. point in time, but had, had a really big impact on the pediatric hospitals uh, locally. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure that, I mean, I'd be happy to make some contacts with some of the pediatric groups, both at Cooley and, um, and at Bay State, if that would be helpful to get you guys some local information and not just pass on stuff from the state. I mean, we all know that the situation in Boston is way different than what's here. Mm -hmm. There's kind of rumblings about upticks in strep cases. There's some, I think, probably better information that we get. I know that testing for things like COVID is in a way different space and monitoring for this is in a way different space. Unfortunately, outcomes <clears throat> are in a far different space, but it doesn't necessarily mean that any of these illnesses aren't impacting staff absences mm -hmm. or student absences. And as we talk about how to keep these kids engaged and how to protect people who may have immune conditions that getting the flu may mean something different, may mean that they need to come off of some of the medications that they have because it impacts with the antiviral medication. There's a, I think a lot of ways that we can just talk about this in a more meaningful way. I, okay. I kind of want to connect you with Kara to talk about that. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Because um, I had a conversation with her earlier today, just as a follow up, and um, about adding more to the next, about what we are doing, because there's some stuff that we aren't putting in the newsletter. Like we are giving the Board of Health updates on attendance rates of staff and students. And um, <clears throat> so we're giving that to the Board of Health, but we're not giving that to our local community. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, right. I mean, giving raw data to people without. I don't mean raw data, but you can like water that stuff down into we've seen an uptick in right. absences related to upper respiratory infections, you know, whether that's flu, RSV, COVID, these things are circulating around as we've confirmed with local hospital systems. That there's some of that that can be easy without okay. pointing out raw data. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Well, I was yeah. wondering like who would that come from? Like from the nurse leader? I think that that would be the kind of thing that I that if if you had some contact, I mean, the hospital systems put these reports out on a very regular basis. There, especially through this winter, there have been weekly updates in terms of what the statuses are of these things. So, it, it, pediatrician offices are also very well versed in terms of what's circulating around. There's some relatively easy contacts to not have people generate new bits of information just for Frontier, that as you get these updates about what's circulating around in the community, can you also include us so that we can inform our community about what's going on? I was just thinking of the context of it and who would be responsible. Who would want it to come from a medical person or a nurse leader? Or right now, I, I kind of set up the... No, I say it kind of. So I've set up this year that all medical information is coming from the nurse leader, and the only time that it would come from me is if there is a change in policy, or scheduling, or something—a major change in the operations of the school—that it needs to come from the authority that's making that decision. But any medical updates about different things needs to come from the nurse leader. It's also you know, she has the you know she can write the stuff better than I can, and also she has that. That's what her role is. Um, and so I want to get that, this is what I'm saying, I want to get that feedback to what else could be included in those. I think you know, it's just a way to bring it back yep. to, to having something that is just a little more meaningful for people that might be making decisions about whether to get vaccinated or you know, should I put that off further or should I wear a mask, you know, all those types of things. And well, would you change in policies in regards to that thing? You know, that ship is sailed in oftentimes. The, brings up lots of uh, raw emotions for people. I just mean, I think we can do a better job being effective in what we're communicating to people if we're going to keep doing health communications, passing on information from the state. I don't yeah. think it's effectively doing what we want it to do. Okay. And then pass it Presuming on to the parents, you know, sending it home like a newsletter. Well, or, or, right now it's been going through the parent square with a, and which is, I mean, you don't have to have a right. worksheet or anything, just yeah. electronically mm -hmm. and I think they've it hasn't been inundated like every, every second right. we're getting an email that says something i think that they and have saying i want to take what your feedback out. is and make sure it gets translated right to care who's putting yeah. it out I i'd be happy to set yeah. up a call for it. Up. Yeah. so monday there was the first couple of districts in the state that did go to mass I, I, again. yeah yeah 
if we also and, read and the it, one, then the COVID rates in Franklin meet the CDC criteria for high transmission and recommendation for mask wearing. But also, this is bigger than just COVID because there's lots of other stuff that's circulating around right now. So it's not like this isn't just this is just what we do to just generally keep our communities and the people who we love and trust healthy. <laughs> Anybody else have anything? Motion adjourned. Okay. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you.